Next on our list is number 220 in the 11th edition and 213 in the 12th. 
220 and 213. <clears throat> Glorious things all things are spoken, Zion City of our God. He whose word cannot be broken, only for his own number 304 in the 11th edition uh, and number 292 in the 12th edition. Uh, 304 and 292. <clears throat> Am I a soldier Must I be carried to the 
next on the list we have number 440 and 448 and i think this will be the last one uh, 440 in the 11th edition and 448 in the 12th <clears throat> I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort. In trouble he's my stay, he tells me every care on him to roll. He's a lily of the valley, a bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Last verse. Never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me there. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. Oh, 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 oh far about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sleeping up to glory to see his blessed face. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. All right, we'll hand it over to you now, already. Thank you, Brother Caleb. Uh, we're thankful to the Lord for our song service that we're able to worship the Lord and um, Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. We're thankful for the spirit uh, that the Lord has given us, that these are uh, these songs mean something to us. Uh, they, uh, well, they do. They mean something to us. And we're thankful to the Lord for our uh, song leaders there and singers at uh, Meta Creek. Uh, we certainly do appreciate the effort that you put forth to lead us in this worship service. So thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. It's good to see as many faces as I can see uh, and some of the names as I go through. So it's uh, really good to see you. We hope and trust that uh, we've all been praying for this meeting, that the name of the Lord can be lifted up, uh, that we can uh, exalt that name uh, and rejoice once more uh, not that this is the only time that we're able to rejoice in what the Lord has done for us, uh, but I think uh, throughout our lives and our daily lives and our meditation and the thoughts that we have just uh, going about our daily business, sometimes that we're able to uh, uh, have be pricked in the spirit, uh, so to speak, and that we're able to rejoice and uh, feel close to God in that sense. But uh, certainly as the Lord has set up his kingdom, uh, he set us set apart a special place for the assembly of the saints together uh, to where not only they are lifting each uh, lifting being lifted up but they're helping to lift one another up uh, you know that uh, at the beginning when I said it, it says teaching each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs making melody in our hearts to the Lord so um, it's uh, and then uh, we have this uh, Type of worship that we're doing online tonight but uh even better than that will be the worship service that we're able to meet face to face and i got to tell you there's going to be a worship service better than that uh one great day in glory uh, where all the saints shall be gathered and there'll never be a taking of a parting hand at all uh so um i'm thankful for the opportunity that we have this evening uh so welcome everybody um as we join ourselves together, we have uh, some that we want to try and remember uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> uh, we want to continue to 
be in prayer for Brother Ned and Sister Jeanette. Uh, we pray the Lord's continued blessing upon them. Uh, Elder Joe Miller is having to work this evening. He thinks he's probably going to have to work next Wednesday evening as well. So he sends our love and prayers uh, to the church. It's good to see Elder Oots. Uh, if uh, Elder Carolock is there at uh, Better Creek, we're thankful for him. If he's not, we figure that uh, he's, he's, he's working or something to that effect. So uh, we appreciate his uh, fellowship and ministry. But it's good to see you, Brother Gary. And we're thankful for you. Uh, we continue to be in prayer for several elders, uh, Elder Stan Cato, Elder Brother Gary, of course, uh, uh, Elder Jamie Hancock and Elder Ricky Myers, Elder Charles Smith and Elder Joe Helms. We pray the Lord's blessing upon them uh, in their recovery or in uh, what, whatever they're standing to, uh, ready to face in the way of uh, medical needs and things of that nature. We ask the Lord's uh, presence and blessing upon them that they can feel the Lord's presence with them. Um, so we pray the Lord's blessing upon them. Uh, we ask the Lord, if it's his will, to uh, continue to uh, raise up uh, men to preach the gospel. Uh, we just pray that, uh, I hope that's uh, uh, in the hearts and minds of the Lord's people. And I got, we were talking about this uh, last Sunday, and I got to tell you, I, I, f I forget to pray about that sometimes. It's a shame on me, but uh, we... We hope and trust that uh, the Lord would uh, be long suffering with us and uh, by his power and command. Now, man can't call up preachers. Uh, women can't call up preachers. Preachers can't call up preachers. But there's one that can and, and there's one that has and there's one that does. And aren't you thankful that the Lord has told us that his kingdom will be here? And I would I would take that if his kingdom's going to be here, there's going to be a witness for the truth and they will have uh, ministers to minister in that service, in that position. Uh, but we ask the Lord to uh, uh, bless us in that respect. So we want to remember that in prayer. Um, Brother Gene and Sister Virginia, Sister Ruth and Sister Wanda, we pray the Lord's continued blessing on them. Uh, Sister Merlin's sister Joyce, we mentioned her Sunday. She fell and, uh, and got wounded. Uh, sister Merlin was taken uh, care of her for about a week and now uh, she's con she's continuing to improve she's wearing a neck brace uh but her sons came and uh, got her and they're taking care of her but she seems to be recovering so thank god for that uh, we want to continue to pray for her as well as sister merlin um uh, we continue to be in prayer for brother mike and his uh healing in his post surgery uh hernia surgery he seems to be doing uh, pretty well. He got a good checkup from the doctor his last visit, so thank God for that. Uh, Brendan uh, Crump, we continue to be in prayer for him. Um, for the Caleb's co-worker, we just pray the Lord's continued blessing. Um, uh, Sister um, Anita and brother Curtis's grandson Chase in Japan, serving in the military, we pray the Lord's blessing upon him. Um, Another, uh, we want to remember the Eatons and Brother JB and Sister Mary Catherine from um, Meadow Creek, as well as um, Brother Warren's sister Myra. We pray the Lord's continued blessing upon her. Brother Gary, do you have anybody you'd like to mention, or does anyone else have someone uh, that you may be thinking I have forgotten that would like to remind? Gene. Brother Eddie, I, I was told that uh, Elder Joe Helms contracted COVID last week, and they've been treating him for it, but one day this week, his oxygen level fell down to 70, so they carried him to the hospital. Last time I heard, they had his oxygen level back up, but uh, let, let's continue to keep him in our prayers. Okay, thank you. Um, Brother Gene, we want to remember... Uh, again, Elder Joe Helms uh, having COVID, his oxygen level got down. That's severe. Uh, so we pray the Lord's blessing that. Brother Caleb? Uh, I'm hearing um, that he had a small heart attack. Okay. Light, light heart attack um, was the cause of that. Um, 
We also want to continue to pray for uh, Jonathan Sharp. Uh, Matthew said he got to go visit him yesterday, and um, he's uh, the treatments are being a little rough on him, so we want to pray for him and that family. Um, and also, we want to, um, Sister Wanda will be um, taking a trip out to Arkansas for a couple of weeks. We want to pray for her during that trip. Thank you, Brother Caleb. Uh, so we continue to be in prayer for Brother Jonathan Sharp, Brother Matthew. I'm sure that uh, he was very happy to see uh, his good friend Matthew visit with him. Um, and we want to remember uh, Sister Wanda in that respect again as she's traveling out to Arkansas uh, and Brother Elder Joe Helms. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, no one else being mentioned. Of course, we uh, continue to be in prayer for our country, our country's leaders. Um, we're thankful for our military. Pray the Lord's blessing upon them, as well as our first responders. Uh, we're thankful for the kingdom of God. We pray the Lord uh, would be uh, merciful to us here in this part of the country, that he would continue to stir us up, uh, that we would feel his spirit. We would feel um, um, life as we come to worship, uh, that we would be thankful to what God has done for us. Uh, God has done so, so much for us. Whatever we stand in, whatever we have stood in need of, God has, God has um, not, he, he didn't just offer, but he, he, he provided and he, he made that, um, that sacrifice to God, his father. And that sacrifice was accepted by the father and in sac and accepting that we are accepted in the father. Um, it, I was wanting to read this at the beginning, but it says first Peter chapter one. Uh, verse 13, it says, Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. Or, and that means in uh, my center column, hope perfectly to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So uh, I hope and trust that we're strengthened this evening to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, and that um, the Spirit would just take control of our, our, uh, our thoughts this evening. So, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, Brother uh, Caleb and uh, those at uh, Meta Creek, what number do you have for us? Uh, I'll open with prayer, and we're going to ask Elder Oots if he would to preach for us this evening. Uh, we've been praying for him, and we'll continue to pray. Brother uh, Caleb? Elder Eddie, we're going to sing number 480 in the 11th edition and number 62 in the 12th edition. 480 and 62. With reverence let the saints appear and bow before the Lord. His heart commands with reverence fear and tremble at His Thank you once again. Uh, pray with me, if you would, please. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, once again, dear Lord, we bow our heads to Thee. We hope and trust with a thankful heart, Lord. We're thankful for all that Thou hast done for us all the days of our lives. We're thankful, Lord, for the, the many natural blessings that Thou hast blessed us with in this life. 
the fellowship of the portion of thy saints, uh, making the kingdom known unto us, uh, being part of the kingdom, Lord, that thou hast set up here in this world. Lord, we're thankful. We, we are thankful, Lord, for uh, our natural families that thou has blessed us with, and the jobs that thou has blessed us with. Lord, we have all that to be thankful for, but as we worship here this evening, Lord, and our heads are bowed, we're thankful. We hope and trust above all these things that we're thankful for the spiritual blessings that we have in high places in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But we're thankful, Lord, that whatever may come in this world, that we have a home in glory waiting for us. We hope and trust, Lord, that thou, we would be strengthened by that uh, hope all the remaining days of our lives, knowing that uh, nothing can interfere with what God has done for us. And we have the promise of his coming that he would resurrect these bodies or change them if we still yet breathe while his return is uh, coming at us. Lord, these things we're thankful. We're thankful for thy grace. We're thankful for thy mercy. We're thankful, Lord, for uh, each one that is joined with us here this evening, we're thankful, Lord, for all the prayers that have been offered up on behalf of this service, that we can be stirred up in spiritual things. Uh, we pray, Lord, a special blessing on those that have been called out. Uh, little Jonathan Sharp, Lord, we ask a double portion of thy mercy be upon him and his family as, as he suffers and goes through his sickness and disease and his treatments. We'd ask, Lord, that thou would comfort him and all things administered to him would have the desired effects and that thy will would be done and thou would lift him up according to thy power and might. Uh, we ask, Lord, a special blessing on all the others that have been mentioned here. We pray, Lord, for Brother Gary as now he comes before us. Uh, we pray, Lord, that thou would stir him up in the spirit, uh, that he would feel the liberty of his calling, uh, that he would Although that there is a fear and trembling to stand before the Lord's people, he would feel at ease knowing that he is standing upon the watch walls of Zion and the power and the spirit of God and that he would lift him and lead him and direct him uh, as he would come forth this evening. Bring a message, bringing a message uh, that is needed uh, by the people here that are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. <laughs> Uh, once again, Lord, we're thankful for all that thou has done for us. Continue to bless this country and continue, Lord, we pray that thou would bless this service. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's good to see you, Brother Gary. We hope and trust that uh, prayers would be answered and uh, that you would feel the very presence of God with you. I do appreciate that sweet prayer, Brother Eddie, and the opportunity of once again gathering here tonight, enjoyed the song service, and uh, just the fellowship of seeing the different ones come online, and uh, the love that we have for one another we know would not exist if it were not for the love that the Lord first had for us. We love him because he first loved us and we know that we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren that wonderful gift of the love that comes from almighty god uh, we can't appreciate that enough of what the lord has allowed us to have makes this world even though we're strangers here in this world it gives us a little home here below to be able to gather with god's people and feel that they are praying for us and we're praying for one another and looking to the, the great God of heaven to just supply what we need tonight, just as Brother Eddie has mentioned in his prayer. Uh, we brought uh, to our attention tonight so many that need the Lord's blessings, and we get overwhelmed with our list here at home. And I know you all feel the same way. And I'm thankful to know that our God who is in heaven knows every need before we ask and is able to supply those things, and that gives us a great comfort as well. Y'all know that, but I want to remind you again of that truth so that we won't forget that when we're praying, we're praying to a God who has all power, who knows what we need before we ask, and is able to do, as the, the Bible says, exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I appreciate your prayers for me 
already tonight and what you pray down uh, through the years now uh, and your petitions on my behalf. I've certainly felt them and thank the Lord for the deliverance that I felt in a, in a physical way. I ask you to continue to pray for me and especially tonight as I stand before you, as Brother Eddie also mentioned, we, we stand uh, upon the watch walls of Zion and we look to the good Lord and just pray that he would bless us with liberty to, to speak to you, the Lord's people. Uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like to read to you a passage that's been on my mind. It's found in the seventh chapter of the Gospel of Luke. I'd like to begin reading at verse 36. Probably we'll read down through the end of this chapter. Uh, this is Luke chapter 7, beginning at thir verse 36. We'll read down through verse 50. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. He said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with all thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. They that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Had some wonderful thoughts today concerning this passage. The scripture, I just ask for your prayers that the Lord might bless us to share a portion of them, that the Lord would bless us to feed on what's being taught here by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a wonderful, glorious lesson that's been given in the Word of God. One of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. Think of that invitation coming from the Pharisee and we might speculate about the motives that the Pharisee might have had, whether it was to try to trick him up, as which was often the motive, or whether he was one that saw something in Jesus, like some other Pharisees had been blessed to be able to see, or exactly what the motive is, we really can't tell because it's not laid out for us here clearly in the Word of God. And sometimes when we start speculating about things the Bible doesn't really teach, we can get ourselves into a lot of trouble. I know that's been the case for me uh, on many occasions. I want to think, though, tonight about what a wonderful blessing it was in that day and age and in that time to have had the ability to sit down at a dinner, at a supper, with the one who was sent into this world as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, 
who was verily a prophet, a priest, a king, who was more than all that, who was the very Son of God, God made manifest in the flesh, the living Word, who was with God in the beginning, who came in a body of flesh to save his people from their sins. What a glorious time it would have been to be able to sit at me with the Son of God. And here this Pharisee, rather than treating this wonderful guest with the honor and the praise and the glory that he deserved, didn't even do some of the very simple things that was customary to be done. Jesus points that out to him. And Jesus, though, knowing exactly what was going to take place, and though we might speculate about his motives, we do know this. The Lord knew all about it. He knew his motives. He knew his heart. There wasn't anything here hidden from our Lord. Because this was the Messiah, this was the anointed one, this was the one promised of God who was able and is able today and tonight to discern our thoughts afar off. There is nothing hidden from him. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil, and he knows everything that's going on, even in this meeting tonight, and he also knew about this occasion. We read from verse 49 that there were some others that sat at meet with him that once everything had taken place and Jesus had said, thy sins are forgiven, they bring up a question. Who is this that forgiveth sins also? So there were some others that had been invited to this meeting. No doubt the way it looks, it seems as if this Pharisee wanted his friends to see Jesus, whether it was a curiosity or whether it was uh, to see you and find some fault with him or whatever it might have been. They, he was more, no doubt, concerned about his friends, concerned about those others that had gathered there. And he certainly wouldn't have opened his doors to this little woman who came in as a really uninvited guest as far as the homeowner was concerned. It says, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharise Pharisee's house and he sat down to me. Actually, what he did was recline there at the table. He sat down at the table, and in the position that was customary that day, he leaned upon the table with his feet up behind him, and there he was, he was there in that position. And you know, somebody would say, why would Jesus go to the house of a Pharisee? Why, why would Jesus go talk to this individual? Well, I believe it was because this individual needed a lesson. And I also believe there was another one coming that Jesus knew all about, though those who looked upon him thought he didn't know anything about her. He knew about her. He knew where she was. He knew what she was. He knew how she was coming. He knew when she was coming. It wasn't by happenstance or accident that she showed up at this place. The movement of Almighty God had already taken place in the life of this woman, this woman who had lived a life of ill repute, this woman who from the scripture we could say is probably a harlot, a woman of the streets, a woman that this Pharisee and all of his friends would say, if this woman even touches you, you'll be defiled like she is defiled because they trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And this Simon needed to know that lesson. And I believe a whole lot of Simons, a whole lot of God's little children even down through the ages, need to remember this lesson tonight of what a sweet privilege it is for us to gather at the banqueting house as we have tonight. I was reading a verse over in John 21 where Jesus, after he had, told, he had given them that great drought of fishes, and they had drugged those fishes uh, that, that the net ought to be broken, but they brought those fishes to the shore. Uh, and there he had already prepared for them a meal and had it there. And he told them to bring now the fishes that you, you have called. And then he told them, you come and die. <laughs> and no man needed to teach any of them that he was the Lord, for they all knew at that time he was the Lord. What about us tonight? What about you? What about me? Do we realize what a privilege it is to come away for just a little while from the cares and the troubles of this world 
and sit together, even if it's in a Zoom meeting, and I'm in 100% agreement. Oh, when you and I can take up our, our cross and we can come to the house of God and forsake not the assembling of ourselves together and meet in person, uh, what a glorious place it is when God's little children can gather there. And every opportunity, if we are able and can, we ought to be there present because it's the house of God where he's provided for us a place to worship him. And he bids us as he's as we sing that hymn ye the he's come and dine uh, uh he calls come come and dine he calls his chosen people to come and dine and oh what a blessing it is and i said to you tonight there is no better place to be tonight we don't have a meeting in person around us here anywhere tonight and I don't know of any other place that I could be that's any more important or any more valuable or any more meaningful to me. And I don't believe there's any, any more valuable or meaningful to you than to be able to gather here tonight as we have, though we are a distance apart, we can gather and we can sing together and we can pray together. and We can hear from the word of God together and listen, we are in a banqueting house. And though we may not see him as we should in all tonight, the most important guest that we could have is present. And that is something we ought to be begging every time we come. Here we see the words, this Pharisee desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and he sat down to meet. And while he was there, unknown to the Pharisee that this woman was coming, probably if he'd have known she was a coming, he wouldn't, he would have closed the door, or shut the door, or tried to hinder her in some way. Uh, but here Jesus, knowing exactly where she was coming, and here she takes a position of a servant. She didn't come feeling like she was here to help the Lord or do something for the Lord or be of benefit to him. She came because need draw, drawn, drew her. Uh, she came unto him because her heavenly father drew her. And she came to him in order to offer up the praise and the adoration and the thanksgiving for all that he had done for her. I was thinking over in Psalm 51 and that wonderful prayer and everything that Brother uh, David was offering there and asking God to forgive him for the sin that he had committed and all the things that he had done wrong. wrong. He says there in verse 17 of that wonderful Psalm, uh, verse 17 of Psalm 51, he says, the sacrifices of God are a broken heart and a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. I hope that's good news to you tonight. Uh, all the the Pharisee reading that wouldn't be interested in that because he didn't have it seems a broken heart. He he felt that he trusted in himself that he was righteous and he despised others and he wasn't concerned about his condition. As a matter of fact, when he saw this little woman and her pitiful condition, rather than feeling a a a, a, a heartache for her or anything like that, uh, he saw her and looked down upon her. He looked upon her and despised others. But oh, we had a Savior. Aren't you glad we've got a Savior that knew she was coming? And there he was in just the right position for this little servant to come. And she stood at his feet behind him. Wonder why she was at his feet behind him because she didn't feel worthy to come before his face. She didn't come to help Jesus out. Uh, she didn't prepare the meal in order for that he might be able to eat. Yeah, she didn't feel like Jesus needed uh, her help. Uh, she she felt like I need his help. That's what I love about an old Baptist meeting. We don't gather here tonight thinking, and I hope and pray we never do, and I hope and pray and trust we don't. And it's a warning to us tonight uh, not to come thinking as that Laodicean church did over in, in uh, the book of Revelation in chapter 3. They were, they were rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. And, and Jesus told them, and you have forgotten that you were poor and miserable and blind and naked. Uh, and and you, because you were in that miserable condition, if you'd have asked of me, I would have given you gold tried in the fire. Or I'd have given you white raiment that would have covered your nakedness. Or I'd have given you uh, eye salve for your eyes that you might be able to see to Night, we don't come out here uh, or meet in this capacity to help the Lord because we need his help, don't we? I'll tell you what, if he doesn't help me, I don't have any help. 
If we came on here tonight, it was just me and you. We wouldn't have, be able to help one another. If the Lord doesn't bless the singing with his manifest presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, it'll be cold and dry and dull. And it wasn't that way tonight because I feel the Lord blessed it. If the Lord doesn't make intercession for us in our prayers, uh, the prayers that are offered wouldn't go, go above our head. Uh, and they wouldn't even come out of our heart because we don't know how to pray as we ought. The Spirit has to make intercession for us with heart groanings. Thanks be to God when we offered prayer tonight. I believe it was heard in heaven because there was a God who loved us enough to forgive us. And he said uh, his darling son is set down on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us tonight so that we might be heard. Then the preaching of the gospel would be completely in vain unless the Lord gives the minister the ability and the power and the ability uh, to preach the gospel and then give the hearer uh, that's listening the ability to hear it and apply it to your heart, it'll be of no benefit. And this little woman knew I need him. Simon felt like he needed me in a sense because I've invited him here to eat. Now, I didn't, I didn't do the ordinary things. He says over in verse 44, he says, I entered into thy house and thou gavest me no water for my feet. Just a normal custom for a, to be courteous to a guest in that day and age. It was something to be done. But rather than doing that, he was obviously more concerned about other things than the most important guest. Do you feel sometimes we're concerned about other things? I wish I could tell you tonight, I've never been like that, but oh, I must confess, there have been many times that I've come to the house of God and I've been concerned about this or I've been concerned about that. And the most important thing that I ought to be concerned about is that Jesus, our Savior, would manifest his presence. He said to that Laodicean church, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, he's not talking to the heart's door of a dead alien sinner. He's talking to a congregation of believers who had forgotten the goodness and the mercy of the Lord, who had taken his grace and his mercy for granted, who had gotten self-centered and self-satisfied uh, and asleep and, 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 and uh, uh, had not called things hot, hot or cold, cold, but they'd become lukewarm in their service and in their fellowship. Sometimes do you feel you're growing lukewarm? Sometimes do you sing amazing grace and you don't feel the warmth of, uh, that you ought to feel when you say amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me how uh, do you recognize what a wretch you are this little sister she had been awakened by the grace of god and she had been reminded what a what a sinner she was and it had caused her to have tears flow from her eyes not just one or two little drops but enough that she could wash the feet of our lord and savior jesus christ Oh, may the Lord bless us in all our meetings. May we revive us so that all our meetings, we feel that same feeling that this little sister felt so that the tears fill our eyes, our tears of sorrow uh, and penitence uh, because of what we have done and, con and how we've walked contrary to him. Uh, tears of contrition where we feel, uh, Lord, I've, I've sinned so against thee. And as the prodigal son said, I'm no more worthy to be called their son. Just make me as one of thy hired servants. This little sister didn't come for some position. She didn't come to be recognized by the Pharisees. She knew how they were going to treat her. She knew how they were going to look down upon her. And that's the way the world treats a little child of grace. But listen to this, little oh child, child of God, blessed are the poor in spirit. For well, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And this little sister, I believe, found a blessing in the kingdom of heaven right here on this occasion. She got a little heaven before she got to heaven. <laughs> she got a little taste of what it meant. Oh, she did this, not in order to get something, but because so much had already been done for, it caused her and motivated her and, and gave her the hunger and the thirst that I need to be at his feet. I'm not worthy to come before his face. I need to come. And the tears flowed out of her eyes. And yes, there were tears of sorrow, but I think there was also some tears of joy, don't you? And oh, isn't it a good thing that we can have the tears of sorrow? They must come. But oh, if we were stuck in the sorrow, if all we had was the sorrow and the broken heart, 
I want you to know there's healing. There's balm in Gilead. Uh, there's healing for God's little children. There's healing in the gospel. There's healing in the gospel message. There's healing in what was done for us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there's healing in hearing about it. There's healing in believing it. And then there's healing in taking up your cross and walking in that which the Lord calls you to do. And this little sister found that wonderful healing that was there in the presence of God in the presence of the Son of God as she worshiped him. Listen, she worshiped him. Sometimes we show up, but I'm not, I'm afraid. I know with me, sometimes I wonder how much is it about I've worshiped him when I can go and be so cold. Now, you just can't turn it on when you want to turn it on and make it happen, but you can, you and I can ask, can't we? We can ask the Lord, Lord, stir my heart, cause tears to fall from my eyes, cause me to remember how great things thou hast done for me, cause me to remember where I was and where I would be and where I would continue to be. And the end result of that, let me remember, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let me remember how that the wages of sin is his death, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and Lord, may it be such in me and in all of us that we the, the tears would flow from our eyes uh, and the feelings would flow from our heart of gratitude and thanksgiving and contrition and penitence where we ask God, forgive us, O Lord, and then feel that forgiveness applied because he's faithful and just. When we confess our sins, you know what the Bible says? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all iniquity. And listen, that cleansing has already taken place legally on the cross of Calvary some 2,000 years ago before you and I were ever born in this world. If we belong to him in covenant and chosen in him, he died for us and our salvation was complete and finished when Jesus said it is finished. But here in time, what a blessing it is when we can come to him in a day-to-day -day sense and say, Father, I've messed up again. I've, I've messed up one more time. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. And he says to us, this is the word of God, Matthew 11. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And to take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Do you believe this little sister found some rest on this occasion? Oh, I do. And I'll tell you, I believe the old Simon who was resting in his own self-righteousness. I got some stirring up. <laughs> the Lord showed him love and compassion by chastening him and correcting him. And I'm thankful tonight that he's left this on record, not just for them in that day and time, but it's also here for our learning. So that we might remember tonight where we ought to be, who we are, what we would be without him. And then by grace, what we are with him. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a chosen generation. And we're here to bring forth the praises of him who had called us out of nature's darkness into his marvelous light. She stood at his feet behind him. And she began to wash his feet with tears. Can you see what an abundance of tears must have flowed out? Simon, looking upon that, you would have thought uh, at a common courtesy would have said, here, here's a pan of water. Uh, watch his feet. Didn't do that because he just looked at her and, oh, I don't want to touch that woman. And even in his own thoughts with his arrogance and his ignorance, he thought if he knew who this woman was, he wouldn't let her touch him. He, If he was really a prophet, he would know who she was. And yet what he thought he knew, he didn't have a clue because this man knew this woman before the foundation of the world. He foreknew her. He loved her. And I believe he loved Simon enough to call him out and say, Simon, I've got something to say to you. 
She stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and she did wipe them with the hairs of her head. Uh, no one offered a towel. It would have been customary at that time for the house to have all of those things. No one gave any of that, but this little woman wouldn't have taken it anyway. She used what the Lord had given her. Uh, she used the very best she had. Her tears of sorrow and her tears of joy washed the feet of her master, and there she wiped his feet with the hairs of her head, what the Lord had given her as an ornament for her beauty, an ornament really for her glory. And there she took that and used it to wipe the feet of our Lord. You know what it was about? It was about, I'm going to honor him. Isn't that where we should be tonight? When we sing hymns, what should it be about? It should be, I want to honor him. When we offer prayer, what should it be about? I want to please him. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I want to give him the glory and the honor and the praise. She, she then took that box, that, that ornament that was of some, well, I don't know how much value, but we know in one place in the scripture, it was a valuable ornament, probably the same here, but she took that. We don't know uh, how she gathered that or how she had that or what it was, but I'm telling you, this woman wasn't the same woman uh, that, the, that the Pharisee knew as the woman in the city, which was a sinner. Yes, she was the same person, but she was a different person because if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, listen, he's a new creature. <laughs> if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Don't you think that's why some of the tears flowed from her eyes? Don't you think that's why she did what she did and what she was all about? We don't have to think, because he tells us what it was all about. But oh, isn't it good to think about that tonight and meditate upon it? Shouldn't it cause us to be so thankful that he would do what he did for her, he did for you, and he did for me, if indeed we are his children? And she took that and broke it and anointed them, anointed his feet with the ointment. And when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself. Notice how he acted. He didn't even say a word. He didn't speak out loud. He didn't tell Jesus anything. Jesus showing him, you think I'm not a prophet? You, you. He knew what was in that Pharisee's heart. He knew what he was thinking, just like he knows who's, what's in our hearts tonight. Uh, again, all things are naked and open before him with whom we have to do. And that can be a frightening thing, but it also can be a comforting thing to know that every sin that I've ever committed, it might be hidden from me, but it wasn't hidden from him. And when he died on the tree of the cross, he was bruised for my transgression. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my, my iniquities. And with his stripe, I'm healed. And every sin that I've ever committed and you've ever committed, he knew about and knows about. And there wasn't one of them missed. When he died and paid, paid that price and said, it is finished, I believe that work of redemption was finished when that he had bought and paid for every one of his children. And his name was called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And he's done that. Now, when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this man, he had no clue who this man was. He may have had some inkling, but he he says if he were a prophet, he may have thought, well, is he a prophet? Oh, he was a prophet enough to know what this man was thinking, and he was about to tell him that. He wasn't just a prophet. He was the prophet that was prophesied in the Old Testament that was going to come, a prophet greater than Moses and Elijah and Elisha, a prophet uh, that was the, the prophet and the priest and the king. He was not only those, he was the son of God. <laughs> God made manifest in the flesh. Great is the mystery of godliness. He said, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him. Do you think he knew who she was? He knew all about her. And the only thing was Simon didn't know all about her because what she used to be, she wasn't anymore. She had had a, she had, 
Somebody might say, or, or somebody might try to say she changed her heart. No, she didn't change her heart. Uh, that heart she had was deceitful and desperately wicked above all things, and who can know it? Uh, she didn't change her mind and turn uh, from her wicked ways to go on another course. No more than an Ethiopian can change the color of his skin, or a leopard his, his spots. Can a man change, who doeth evil turn and do good on his own? Yeah, and that was a work of grace that took place in her. And I'll tell you what she had once loved, she now hates. And what she once hated, she now loved. And the evidence is in all what she was doing. And I see the evidence tonight. You're here at a place that I don't even believe you'd be unless the Lord had awakened you by his grace. I don't believe you'd have desired to sing the songs of Zion unless the Lord had awakened you by his grace. I believe I've already said enough about our rottenness and they're no good, uh, that if you didn't see that already in your heart, you would have clicked off already and cleared the screen of your name and your picture. But I'm telling you, I believe you understand what she understood, that without the grace of God, there'd be no hope for me. There'd be no hope for you. There'd be no hope for any of us. And if we had to depend on one another, no more than one speck of dirt can help another speck of dirt, we'd have no help. But we don't have help in a speck of dirt. We have a help in a solid rock. And that rock goes all the way down, as an old brother said. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, our rock, our strength, our help, our Savior, our Lord and Lord, our King of Kings, are the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Here, this, this little woman had faith because Jesus had given it to her. He was the author of it. Jesus answering said unto him, he said, What manner, if he had known what manner of woman he was, of, of, what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And he spoke the truth when he said she is a sinner. But what he didn't see is that I'm a sinner too. What he didn't come to see is understand the, the depth of my sin. And when we get to looking around us and all we can see, and it, it shows up sometimes in our lives, doesn't it? We ride down the street and we see somebody over here or somebody over there, and we think if we don't, we, if we don't say it, we think it. And I remember over in the book of Proverbs, I believe it's Proverbs 6, that there were six things that the Lord hated, and the seventh was an abomination unto him, and listed among them in the very first one. is sometimes what I see when I look in the mirror or see my image in a window that's passing by, or looking at someone else, it's a proud look. I want you to know there's no room in my life for a proud look. Because if it were not for the grace of God, listen, but for the grace of God, there go I. But for the grace of God, where would I be tonight? Where would you be tonight? Oh, I need to be at his feet. I need to be thanking him for his grace and his mercy and his love and all that he's done for me. That's where we need to be and never find ourselves like old Simon, which sometimes I'm afraid we do. As a matter of fact, sometimes I see much more Simon than I see the little woman in me. And I don't say that uh, to boast in any way. I just say it in a way of confession. May the Lord break my heart and cause me to see myself uh, and not despise others and realize even if we have any righteousness tonight, if we have any understanding of the things of God, and I believe we do, has not God been good to us that he brought us from death to life? And then hasn't he been good to us to allow us to know that Jesus paid the price when he died on the cross? He didn't try to do it or make an opportunity for it to be done or give it up, leave it up to you to accomplish. But did you and I tonight understand, understand that when he died on the cross, the work was finished and complete and everyone for whom he died will be with him in heaven and immortal glory. As we've heard in the prayer, we have an inheritance that's incorruptible, that's undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for us. And all of that is not about what we did for the Lord. But I'll tell you, because of what he's done for us, I say he's forgiven us much. Oh, the one here had 50 pennies, 50 pence, and the one at 500. And the parable that he laid out is that the one that had 50 and the one had 500, uh, that he said, and let's read it. He says, and Jesus answering said, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. Gives me some consolation about Simon. 
because the Lord's dealing with him. The Lord's correcting him. The Lord's chastening him. The Lord's instructing him. He says, Master, say on. He said, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. And I know, you know how many of us are debtors tonight? Every single one of us. We owe God everything. We could never do one thing to merit his favor. We could never do one thing to deserve life in any respect whatsoever. We couldn't do anything to deserve spiritual life. We couldn't do anything to deserve his church or the fellowship that we have among the brethren or the fellowship we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. All of the things that we have are by the grace of God and the mercy of God and the love of God, and we owe him everything. We are debtors. He says, Jesus Answering said, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. He's laying out the condition of this woman and the condition of Simon. And the one owed 500 pence. In this picture, I believe that's a picture of the woman. And the other 50, that would be Simon. And not really in reality what Simon owed. Oh, if, not, if Simon knew what he really owed, it would be much more than that. But in his own opinion, and in his own mind, he might say, I'm a little guilty, but I'm not like this woman. Isn't that what the old publican said about the Pharisee? Oh, Lord, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. And I really am thankful I'm not like this old publican. And he pointed him out. No, what he really didn't know was how deep in debt he is. You know, tonight, I don't know how you feel, but I, I trust you and I all and hope we feel as in debt as much as we can. But you know, you and I really haven't touched how in debt we really are. Because we don't have a clue how bad off we are were it not for the grace of God. The more we learn of him, the more we'll see that. And this lesson tells me the more we see that, the more we'll love him because of it. The more we hear about it and understand about our depravity, the more we'll appreciate and be thankful for what the Lord did for us. And the more likely we're going to be at his feet, watching them with our tears and wiping them with the hairs of our head, figuratively, figuratively speaking, uh, and that we would be there uh, anointing his feet with ointment and kissing his feet like this dear little sister. That means we'd be at his high, at the feet of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, listening to his word and feeding on, on his word and worshiping him and giving him honor and praise and glory. It says the one owed 500, the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Oh, I love that part, don't you? They didn't have anything to pay. And it really doesn't matter how bad off we are. If, you don't have, if you've got a debt and you don't have anything to pay, you're in trouble. It doesn't matter what you think your debt is. It doesn't matter how, if it's 500 or 50, if it's 10 times more than this brother over here, if you don't have anything to pay, and that's the lesson, we didn't have anything to pay. That's why we sing from the heart tonight, Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. That's why uh, we, we're thankful to have a God who had the ability to pay the price. He paid the price. He bore my portion. He gave his life upon the tree. Oh, praise the Lord. He is my Savior. He gave his life, his life for me. They had nothing to pay. He frankly forgave them both. I don't think that means that there wasn't a price paid. He didn't just forget the price. He didn't just say, okay, I'll let it go. He, he's not an unjust judge, an unjust God. He didn't say, okay, sin's okay, and I'll just look over it. He didn't accept it or receive it. No, a price had to be paid in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 at the very end of it. It tells us that he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the whole 53rd Psalm and the 20, I mean, the 53rd uh, chapter of Isaiah and the 22nd Psalm and the ninth chapter of the book of Daniel, uh, we read again and again about when that price was paid. And it was coming in the future here as we read about this. Jesus. This was going to go through the cross and there at Calvary, the price that needed to be paid so that this little sister would be forgiven and the price that needed to be paid so that I might be forgiven and you might be forgiven. He frankly forgave them all because Jesus paid the price and he paid it in full. And the Lord saw the travail of his soul and he was satisfied. 
Isn't that good? By his knowledge, he says, shall my righteous servant justify many. He's the firstborn among many brethren. Is that good news tonight to you? Oh, if you feel to be Simon, you may not be very impressive to you, but if you're like the little sister, oh, that's good news. That makes me happy. That gives me peace. Oh, can I rest in it? Lord, let me trust thee. Oh, for grace to trust thee more. Oh, for grace to believe it more. Oh, for grace to walk in it more. Lord, bless us. Lord, supply what we need. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most, almost like, well, I guess I need to answer this. He's asked me this question. He said, I, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most, and he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. And then he took this parable. A parable is a natural truth that teaches a spiritual truth. A parable is a natural picture that the Lord gives that teaches a spiritual picture, and he applies it to this man and I believe to every one of us, anytime we get a little puffed up in our mind and get that proud look of Proverbs 6 and have that interfere with our service to Almighty God and our worship, we won't lose our eternal life. But I'll tell you, God's little children can lose their joy and their rest and their peace. When we forget our righteousnesses, our butt is filthy rags. And we think we, we like the Laodicean church, start feeling a little rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. And we forget what we ought to be taught by that wonderful letter written to that church. You have forgotten that you are blind and miserable and naked and poor. And if we're going to have anything tonight, we've got to ask him. Isn't it good, though, when we ask? He says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That is, if we ask for a good thing, do you believe what Jesus has told us to ask for is a good thing to ask for? And if it is a good thing to ask for, do you believe that he will give us what we ask for in regard to that? I absolutely believe that. It's laid down in God's word. May the Lord bless us to be at his feet, begging him each and every time we meet, like the hymn writer wrote, hungry and faint and poor, behold us, Lord, again. Assembled at thy mercy's door, thy bounty to obtain. That's the words of this little sister, not the words of Simon. Lord, Simon would have said, I'm here to help you. All oh, the world says we're helping the Lord, brethren. I'll tell you what, if he needs our help, he's in trouble. Now God's not in trouble. He doesn't need our help. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He has all power. He has all knowledge. He's everywhere present and nowhere absent. He says in the psalmist, if he was hungry, he wouldn't ask us. I'm telling you, we have a God who's able to supply exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That is in us. He's worked. He's given us. We have, he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. That's what caused this little woman to be able to come to a Pharisee's house where she knew she'd be mocked and ridiculed, but she came anyway because her master, she heard Jesus was there. And that's the reason she came. She didn't come to see anybody else. She came to see Jesus. <laughs> and that where we are tonight, I would see Jesus. I can see him, it'll be all right. Oh, I'm thankful to see my brethren. And in a sense, when we see our brethren, what did he say? When we hug our brethren's neck, inasmuch as we've done it to the least of our brethren, we've done it unto him. Oh, when we help them along the way, when, they, when we do that, it's as doing it unto him. But let him be that motivation for us. I want to serve him. I want to honor him. It may it be for his glory and for his praise. He turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? Let me, get, let me get the verse before. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most, then he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And then he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. That's what he did. But this little woman, she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Then he says, thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased to kiss my feet. Uh, this, woman's, this woman's loving much because she recognized I've been forgiven much. She didn't do these things to get forgiven. She'd already been forgiven, but she was doing this in response to that forgiveness. 
That's what the parable taught. He said, my, my head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath, not, hath anointed my feet with ointment. Verse 47, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Some might misread that to think her sins were forgiven because of what she did, but that's not what the parable taught. The parable taught she was forgiven, and that's why she did what she did, because she was forgiven first. The forgiveness was first, and the results came, uh, the effect of that came as she loved him much because she was forgiven much. She recognized what a sinner she was by the grace of God and that she had been forgiven, and because of that, she loved much. She responded. That's what the parable taught. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. That didn't mean that the Simon had just done a little wrong. It just meant in his own estimation he'd done a little, he had thought he'd done a little wrong. That's why he didn't show much. He invited Jesus to dinner, but he didn't do anything else. And he's being corrected. And he said unto her, thus, and listen to these words. Oh, he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Why were her sins forgiven? Because of what she did? No. He frankly forgave them both. That's what the parable taught. He frankly forgave them both. She was that 500 one. She was in debt 500, and he frankly forgave her. She didn't merit it. She didn't earn it. She didn't have anything to give. She had nothing to pay, but he forgave her. Thy sins are forgiven. He's telling her again, thy sins are forgiven. And he's not only telling her thy sins are forgiven, he's telling those Pharisees, look, you think this woman uh, is in a bad way, but oh, this woman is one of my little lambs. This is one of my little sheep. This is one that I bought and paid for. This is one that belongs to me. And her sins are forgiven. And he was also telling them, I have the power to forgive sins, which is the same in reality as saying, I am God. <laughs> you know, that would be blasphemy if it were not the truth that came from the lips of the Son of God, who was verily one with the Father. Isn't it wonderful to know that tonight? So many people see Jesus as a great teacher and a great man and a great prophet, and thought he had many good things to say, but he was much more than that. He was verily the Son of God and the Son of Man, and he came to pay the sin debt, and he had everything he needed to do it, and he did it. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said, and he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. How did her faith save her? Her faith didn't eternally carry her to glory. Jesus Christ paid for her sin debt on the cross, but her faith delivered her. There was some deliverance in her faith. And where did the faith come from? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. He is the author and the finisher of her faith. But her faith was given to her as a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things are not seen, that she might see and know and understand what Jesus was going to do for her at Calvary and paying that sin debt and that she might rest in him as her savior, as the Messiah, as the anointed one that was taught throughout the Old Testament, who had come and was about to go to the cross in a couple of years. <laughs> the appointed time of the Father had come. He had come here into this world, and he was working out a perfect obedience. He was doing all that was necessary, and he was about, and he was going in a, in a short time, he was going to go to the cross and dare bear her and the sin debt of all of his chosen people. And because of that, and tonight, can we not go away here tonight in peace knowing Jesus paid it all, and all to him as I owe, and with the hymn writer, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood is, was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee, therefore I can come. A sinner like she could come, and tonight a sinner like me can come, and I find that rest and that peace, and it's all by his grace. I appreciate your kind attention tonight. You have a mind to pray. Remember me, and God bless you. We love you. We love you too, Brother Gary. We're thankful that the Lord's uh, answered our prayers once more. Uh, what a wonderful exhibition of faith the sister showed by 
coming into the Pharisee's house. Um, may God bless us that uh, we could exhibit our faith the same way. Um, we're thankful for that message. We're thankful for the forgiveness of our sins, uh, knowing that uh, our debt has been paid in full. Our debt has been paid in full. Thank God for that. Um, like to have a hymn as a way of closing here. Uh, we're thankful once again for what's gone on before. We thank the Lord for his good word. And we thank the Lord for the minister that's uh, come and delivered it to us. Brother Kevin or Brother Caleb, what number do y'all have for us? Uh, Elder Eddie, we're going to sing number 311 in the 11th edition, and it's 293 in the 12th edition. 311 and 293. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplied you. that's a good half don't you think even though it's the half has never yet been told the half that we've got down here that's a good half <laughs> it makes you hunger for the rest of it doesn't it <laughs> and one day we'll know it i believe we'll know it thank god for that uh it's been good to meet with each one of you this evening we hope and trust that we'll have a mind to pray for one another uh pray for ourselves that the lord would cause a revival uh to happen and be within us uh, every time we meet, uh, that uh, we can be stirred up in spiritual things, uh, live our life for Christ. Uh, he, he lived his life for us. Um, is, does anyone have any announcements they'd like to share with us? 
All righty, till we meet again, we hope and trust that the Lord would bless each one of you. Elder Eddie, uh, just remember yes. the, the um, what is it, 190 something at the annual Bear Creek Association is going to be here in just a few weeks um, at Liberty Hill. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you, brother. Be in prayer for the upcoming association. Thank you so much. Third weekend, uh, Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday. Yes, sir. Thank you. Brother Eddie, I, I believe you're going to Virginia this weekend. Is that right? Going down there to be with Elder Dan Parker. Yes, if you would, have a mind to pray for me. Appreciate that very much and all that service. Anything else? All right. We'll ask Brother Steve Bailey, if he would, to dismiss us with uh, prayers. Good to see you and Sister Mary this evening. Let's go to the Lord. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to thee, dear Lord, thanking thee for this little meeting that we were able to have, dear Lord. Thank thee for the message that was so ably brought to us, Lord. And we ask thee if it would be thy will to, to instill it in all of our hearts, Lord. Uh, we thank thee, dear Lord, for our lives. We thank thee for our family and our nation, Lord. Now, as we come to a close here, dear Lord, this evening. We ask thee to be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we humbly pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Steve. Thanks to all of y'all that's uh, joined us. Thank you for all your prayers. Look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you, Brother Gary. Lord bless you. Bless God us you. in it. God bless you, Brother Eddie. We love y'all. Good seeing you, Brother Steve. Appreciate that prayer. Seeing you too, Brother Gary. Good, good seeing all of you. Thank the Lord for you. Thank you all. Bye, Bye sweet. Lord, Bye, Samuel. Good meeting. Love y'all. Love you all. Good meeting. This is Sister Judy Gray. I lost my voice, but I can still listen to the wonderful service. And bless Brother Gary. Bless all of y'all, the singers. All. Bless you all. Love you. And looking forward to uh, next Wednesday night. Love y'all and good night. Good night, Sister Judy. Good night. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. Night, night, Samuel. <laughs> Night, night, Miriam. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Samuel. Bye, Mama. Bye, Bye, Grandpa. Bye, sweetheart. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, Grandpa. Y'all have a good night. Hope to see you. Hope to see you all soon. <laughs>